Now I'm ready. That was uh, plane number three I had to do before heading out for to get the new load. So um, I hope you guys had a good week. So now it's back to work uh, because I don't have my accordion anymore. Give it again for final tuning. Final tuning to my new buddy Ron, the accordion magician. He's gonna tune it, sound it like perfect. Uh, I'm studying every day, but now I won't have this instrument until I'm back from US. So uh, I posted a comment for uh, paid members that I booked a load out of Maryland. So I'm loading the same huge Volvo excavator that I picked up in March when Maryland DOT was not too pleased with my permits and gave me a big fine. For some reason that uh, I was supposed to go to court, actually today. Yeah, today was supposed to be the court date. And then two months before, both my lawyer and me, we received a letter saying that the court is canceled with no explanation you know not saying that new date will be you know arranged or anything. they just cancel the court <laughs> i don't know what's going on my lawyer doesn't know what's going on but i paid him a bunch of money but so he's uh, he's there in maryland keeping the finger on the pulse of the situation now so i'm picking up a brand new volvo excavator that just came off the factory line and then they loaded it on the ship i always want to see that you know i want to see how they load excavators i don't think they load them like by you know by driving them on because this i'm guessing they load them with a crane you know straight into the hold of the ship Unless this one they decided to ship by plane. You guys let me know in the comments if you think that's possible. So 94,700 pounds is what this machine weighs. And of course, since we have a our favorite uh, trade union situation, uh, Captain Sergei will now be promoted to Marshal and uh, i'll be loading this monster myself again so now i just i'm i'm just leaving starbucks over here i uh this was number thing number three i mentioned right so you gotta make sure you have a you have a bunch of protein bars because i cannot find these in the states and i like these because they're dairy free and it's vegan you know they just taste good so it's each each one has 16 grams of protein, 16 grams of fiber, and very low sugar. So this is 240, ca 240 calories. So that's what I have in the morning usually. Either this one or there's a, so this is coconut with cashew, like super tasty. Either this one or there's another one by the same, I think it's the same company. Uh, so what makes this? I, it's called Iron Vegan. So I know it's it's a US company, I guarantee it, but I don't see them in the States. Actually, wait a second. Check this out. You see that red Canadian leaf made in Canada? Uh, of Marquis de Comin de Body, some nutritional products distributed by Body Plus Nutritional Products Inc., Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Oh, maybe that's why I don't see them. In the, in the states but yeah these are very nice very tasty they're sweet but it's not sugar so anyway that was thing number three so thing number one after i got the load and of course they sent me the the broker sent me the um rate confirmation you gotta sign it send it back make sure you note the currency i always do that because 
I deal with Americans, of course, and uh, quite often they don't realize that the US dollar is not the only currency in the world. So they would just write on the rake information dollar sign and then the, you know, the typical six, seven, eight digits after that. I'm just kidding. I wish it was that easy, but because every trip you have to negotiate, you have to pull teeth to, to get to the price you want. Um, but yeah, they just put the dollar sign and then it says Carrier Sergey Drachev. But you know, because I'm registered in Canada, so I always open that document in my, you know, on my Mac in the PDF viewer and I, and I bake in the phrase in red US dollars. And then I sign it. I save it again as a PDF so that they cannot modify it so it stays US dollars. And this, this trip is cool because the customer is paying me back for permits so this goes from maryland to north of toronto so there's a lot of empty miles but you know it pays good and again so they reimburse me all permits so what the way they do it is they issue you the issue the carrier uh the rate confirmation and on the rate confirmation so there'll be the base price and then it'll say Compensation is uh, price or rate plus permits. And what they do is, uh, once you have all your permits issued and you have the invoice, very important, you have the invoice from your from your permit broker, or you know, if you load it yourself, you have the invoice for all the uh, fees you paid, right? And then you send it to the broker to the freight broker and they reissue the rate confirmation with the new amount and they add let's say let's say I spent 2000 bucks so now they add the 2000 to the rate confirmation and you receive a new rate confirmation with the same number it just is basically revised right it'll say revised and then you sign it send it back and now it's all cool and so that was thing number one make sure it's signed make sure there's no mistakes my name and i had us dollars right so thing number two because this is maryland and ninety four thousand seven hundred pounds plus my empty weight of 60 i'll be over 150 which now i know means that you gotta have a police escort for that meager 47 miles between the port and the pa line and you need one civilian escort and so because of but you cannot order the police escort without having the permit because the first thing they're going to ask you and uh, i know this because i i use them a few times right the, the first thing they're going to ask you they're going to ask you for the number of the permit you call the the barrack the police barrack in that area like you're supposed to and you say hey i need a police escort for let's say monday uh, two o'clock and they say okay what's your permit number and I don't have a permit so and because these guys on on everywhere in writing they say uh, police escort needs to be arranged 24 to 48 hours in advance which is BS because normally you can call them in the morning they'll just they'll give you a car you know in the in the afternoon but sometimes they are busy and so they'll say next day you know but whenever i had to do this i always booked them on the next day and you gotta make sure that there's no mistakes on the permit because the guy will check everything and uh, like in ohio they like checking your spacings you know your axle spacing so uh, when you have a police escort you gotta be extremely careful about what you write on that permit you know when you request the permit you gotta be very careful with your axle spacings or otherwise the guy will park you and tell you okay reorder the permit and uh, i'll give you 30 minutes and you're and you pay for the pilot for the escort right because it's uh, on the on the maryland permit there'll be a charge i think it's 250 bucks us and they give you up to four hours if you need more than four hours with the with the cop escort there'll be additional charge but it's only 45 miles and the curfew is up to 3:30. so but i usually leave the port if i if i'm there first thing in the morning i leave the port around 12 or 1 like i checked last time when i got the ticket 
they stopped me on the scale which is like three miles south of the PA line with the same excavator in March because you know I wanted to see the timestamp and the timestamp says they stopped me at at uh, 2 o'clock 2 p.m. and the curfew around uh, Baltimore starts at 3 30 so you have to get out of Baltimore uh, before that and then of course there's York on the way over there I think York is what four o'clock basically yeah first day I never go past uh, Duncannon Duncannon PA the pilot because after that there's a uh, curfew so I always hit either the curfew in York PA or I, I, I hit the curfew in in uh what's this other the other one right after Duncannon so anyway so and so thing number one sign the the uh, rate confirmation send it back right they know you have they have the truck you know you have a load and then you send them updates and then thing number two super important with a load like this is order the permits because I hold this before and plus the uh, the dimensions are on the permit and I was able to look up you know I keep everything on my computer I could go back to March for example to the folder for March on my computer and I can I see all my permits and I, I even see the receipt from um, from uh, uh, my my permit broker so you know I even know the approximate cost of permits well pretty much exact cost of permits and so I just but this time I, I added more weight to keep the DOT happy of course now my permit will be more money because they charge you by the weight so so now I made this excavator on paper weigh hundred and ten thousand pounds so if I get a ticket this time I'll be very very surprised so so hundred ten thousand instead of ninety five or ninety four point seven so just to give me you know because what happens sometimes you know and that's what happened in March uh, like the overall weight is more or less close but then somewhere you overload it like either on the truck because sometimes you cannot properly position the machine in the middle because it has a huge boom or you know a huge stick or a huge bucket stuff like that so uh, it's a very dangerous load I'm telling you I, I learned this in March so 94.7 thousand pounds that's nothing to sneeze at I know in Europe they, they move stuff like this on two axles but unfortunately we cannot do that in US and Canada uh, it's a very responsible job and so number one the rate con number two order permits so I ordered all the permits and I know I will need uh, like I said a police escort and the civilian escort for Maryland so that's gonna cost me 350 US for 47 miles for the civilian escort and 250 US for the police escort just to get out of Maryland so that's thing number two and thing number three very important protein bars so this way I don't have I don't stay hungry uh, in the morning when I'm loading because it's gonna be a real you know physical activity dragging those half an inch chains around and uh yeah one more minor thing is i had to order the uh, that's what i did at the starbucks over here i used the uh, wi-fi i got some coffee and i used the wi-fi to um do the empty ace empty ace manifest because you gotta tell customs that you're coming you cannot just show up at the border hey uh this is captain sergey i'm going to uh, you know maryland to pick up a big nice excavator and they're like who the heck are you so you can get a very big fine if you show up at the border without the preliminary notice and that's what this is all about right so you go online I, I'm using a special website called border connect and it's free as long as you don't have too many trucks like for me it's free you know they charge you they start charging after you do so many crossings per month and I never I think it's up to 10 I think up to 10 crossings a month there's no fee but if you let's say if you're a company and you have like five six trucks you know and you have 20 or 30 crossings every month then they start charging you but for me it's free 
and they're very helpful there's customer service 24 7 if you have a problem so i already know how i've been doing it since uh, what uh, fall of 2017 i'm already very experienced with their website so you go there you, you know i log in i choose my truck my trailer the driver me of course and then they ask they always ask you for the address in us basically where you're going so i've been to that port 50 times so i just click bolt t i start start I, I start typing b-l-t-i bolt and right away it shows up 2700 browning highway baltimore maryland what is that uh, 14 or 12 something like that the zip code and that's it and you just add a little comment there heading empty to the port to pick up an uh, excavator, bring back to Canada. I always do that. I always add a comment when I'm empty, you know, just so that they don't ask you too many questions. And then send, send to customs. And then last thing you have to do, you click on the print in there, in the menu. And it shows you ACE cover sheet. And that's what you need. It's like one sheet of paper with your information, your trip information, you know, your 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 name, your truck plate, trailer plate, uh, where you're crossing. And that's, so I just did that. And so now I'm just heading to my truck. Start the truck, print out that one page and, uh, and update my uh, e-log because I, I haven't been to the truck in one week. So I have to sign each, each entry for each day. And then I'm gonna, head over to the border oh and one more thing i have to do this time is um, i gotta stop on the u.s side at the um, uh, twig company because you know to to get to the to to load and unload at the port you need to have a transportation workers identification card twig t-w-i-c twig and that twig it's like 100 50 bucks or 130 bucks us and it's valid for five years and there's no way to extend it like mine is still valid up up to i think like third week in august but i know it takes them like four to six weeks to issue a new one and so you have to go to the website of this company i think it's called universal something universal like they're kind of like the dealer for this twig system right so you go there, you book an appointment, and that's what I did uh, like one week ago. I booked an appointment. Uh, I wasn't sure how it's gonna work, but actually it worked out fine. So now I'm heading empty to Maryland, past Bo past uh, Buffalo, and I booked an appointment in uh, West Seneca, New York, which is just the suburb of Buffalo on my way to to Baltimore. And it's only like 10 minutes you got to bring your documents and basically what they do is just you, they take your fingerprints and um, and they, then they do you know security check safety check and i got to bring my passport because i'm canadian and my driver's license and i'm going to bring the the current uh twig card maybe it'll help expedite things i don't know pay them uh, the fee and after that i'll be on my way and I have to double check the expiry of the annual inspection on my truck. I remember it's in August, but now I'll have time because you know, I'm only 500 miles away from the port, but I have to leave today in order to get to this appointment, right? So I will have Saturday and Sunday to get to the port. So I was thinking Saturday, I'm gonna check again the expiry date, but Saturday, I'll be in Dansville, New York, and that TA over there, it's always empty, like the shop. Very rarely there's somebody in there. And so I can do a DOT inspection, which is 50 bucks in the States, 60 bucks versus Canada. It's always like 350, 500 Canadian, because over here they have to take your wheels off. It's like crazy. They have to check the brakes like that. Whereas in the States, it's not required, but DOT sticker, from US has the same legal force as our Canadian uh, inspection. So uh, why would I have an, my truck inspected in Canada if I can save, you know, three fifty, four hundred dollars by doing it in the states? Right? The, there's a agreement between Canada and US that our inspections are valid in US and US inspections are valid 
in Canada and there's no rule that says that a Canadian truck cannot be inspected in the States because I got international plates. <sighs> That's it. That's the update. Next thing you'll see, I'll probably do a video on the weekend if I because I'll be killing time somewhere probably in Pennsylvania. So I'll do a video um, if I find something cool to do. Ciao.